Hello everyone, I am Simone and welcome to my channel. Today I would like to analyze with you one of the most controversial aspects of contemporary Indian history, meaning the events that led to the destruction of Babri Mosque by Hindu mob in 1992 in Ayodhya, Uttar Pradesh, to build or rebuild an Hindu temple on its ashes. This was one of the events that contributed to the division of the Hindu and Muslim communities in the country that, at the same time, makes unity in diversity one of its main mottos. On 5th of August 2020, the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi laid a 40 kg silver brick to begin the construction of the Ram Temple in Ayodhya, on the site of the Babri Masjid Mosque, demolished on December 6, 1992. This was the result of a verdict of the Indian Supreme Court happened just a few months after Modi reconfirmation as leader of the most populous democracy in the world, in which the historical site of Ayodhya was assigned to the Hindus and not to Muslims. The decision, apart from allowing Narendra Modi to bring home another result and maintaining another election promise, was supposed to put an end to a controversy that lasted for many decades and that has caused the death of over 2,000 people influencing deeply the relations in the country between the Hindu and Muslim communities. Let's try to trace together the most important events in a chronological order. 1528. The mosque is believed was built in this year by Mir Baki, a commander of the newly declared Mughal Emperor Babur, on the site of a temple that Hindu hardliners believe it was the birthplace of Rama. However, the date of construction remains uncertain. The belief it was built in the year 1528 is based on certain inscriptions on the mosque found in the 20th century. But these inscriptions appear to be more recent than that date. In addition, the mosque has no mention in the records from the 16th century, such as the Baburname or the Ramcharita Manas, or in the reports of the European travelers who visited Ayodhya at that time, which is quite surprising. In fact, the earliest record of the mosque dates back to the early 18th century. These are the documents of a Rajput noble called Jai Singh who purchased this land over which the mosque was standing, and the reports of a European Jesuit missionary who visited Ayodhya in 1767. However, according to this account, the mosque was built by Aurangzeb and not by Babur, Aurangzeb's great-great-great-grandfather. 1857-58 The earliest record of Hindu-Muslim clashes around the dispute site was marked by the British colonial power in 1856-1857. It happened after the First War of Independence, also known as the Great Mutiny, when Hindus and Muslims joined hands in the battlefield to oust British and the latter found it convenient to stoke a potential religious conflict between the two communities. In Ayodhya, they erected a six-foot brick wall dividing the site to grant the inner portion of the mosque to Muslims and the outer portion to Hindus. However, somehow, records from 1856 and 1857 show that Hindus led by Babaram Charandas and Muslims led by local Muslim landlord of Ayodhya, Achan Khan, decided to maintain communal harmony and made a pact to pray within the temple mosque site in two demarcated portions. This harmony remained unbroken for almost a century. December 1949. A group of Hindu fanatics, despite the order of the court to lock the site, allegedly installed idols of Ram Lalla overnight inside the Babri Mosque. Years later, the right-wing Hindu organization Vishwa Hindu Parishad made and widely distributed a video depicting multiple images of a baby boy dressed as Ram miraculously appearing inside the mosque. The local district magistrate, K.K. Nayar, refused to remove the idols, citing law and order reasons. 1950 Mahan Paramans Ramachandra Das, the head of the organization created to promote and oversee the construction of the Rama Temple in Ayodhya, and Gopal Singh Visharad filed suit in Faisabad, asking for permission to pray before they installed idols. The permission was granted, but the inner section of the site remained locked. 1961. The Muslim Sunni Central Board of Waqf in Uttar Pradesh files a case claiming the mosque and claiming also that the surrounding area was a graveyard. 1984. Vishwa Hindu Parishad made itself heard again by forming a committee to liberate the birthplace of Ram and build a temple over it. BJP leader Advani takes over leadership of the campaign. February 1, 1986. Faziabad district judge orders the gates of the disputed shrine to be opened to Hindus for worship. Babri Masjid Action Committee formed shortly thereafter to legally protect the interests of the Muslims. November 9, 1989. Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi allows the Vishwa Hindu Parishad to conduct a ceremony called Shilanyas, 
consecration at an undisputed site close to the Babri Masjid. This happened when the Hindu right-wing group was growing at an unprecedented pace and just days before the commencement of the parliamentary elections. October 3rd, 1990. For the first time, thousands of Karsavaks moved to the disputed site trying to demolish the structure. The former Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Mulayam Singh Yadav orders the police to open fire over them, killing 28. 1991. BJP comes to power in Uttar Pradesh. December 6, 1992. After the silent approval of the authorities, tens of thousands of Karsevaks demolish the disputed structure. The incident triggers widespread communal riots in the country, killing thousands. Two reports were registered. The 197 filed against the thousands of unnamed Karsevaks, alleging offenses of dacoit, robbery, injuring the falling places of public worship, promoting enmity between the two groups on grounds of religion and communal violence. The 198 was filed against eight persons belonging to the Hindu right-wing groups involved in the communal violence, such as BJP, VHP, Bajrang Dal and RSS, for giving hateful speeches. The eight accused were Advani, Ashok Singhal, Vinay Katiar, Uma Bharati, Sindhvi Ritambara, Murli Manohar Joshi, Giriraj Kishor and Vishnu Hari Dalmia. December 16, 1992. The government, led by Narasimha Rao, sets up Liberan Commission to probe the circumstances that led to the demolition of the mosque. The commission released its report in 2009, after 17 years from the mosque demolition, in which the role of the individuals and groups accused were expressed, but as for now, the final trial has not been occurred yet. Interestingly, among the legal procedures in place, there was the Court Order Survey of 2003 conducted by the Archaeological Survey of India, ASI, that, after excavations, claimed to have found evidences of a temple pre-existing the destroyed mosque. Sunni Central Board of Waqf disputed the findings, joined also by many other archaeologists disputing ASI's report. They added the ASI report largely unchallenged because of the power that ASI holds over researchers in the country, making a free research virtually impossible. Okay, friends, it is all for today. As we've seen, the story of this place has always left one side of the contenders dissatisfied with the other. I hope that, despite all the media and political speculation on the matter, India will not forget its secular and pluralistic character, so that one can define himself Indian not on the basis of belonging to a particular religion or ethnicity, but on the desire to be part of this people which, like a diamond, is made up of many equally beautiful faces.